People come from all over the world to see this. Yeah, he's good, yeah. It's a fake. Right, what talking about? It's impossible. I was expecting yeah. the con to end all cons. Like, I, I thought right. it was going to be... I thought that was where Act 3 was starting. You know what I mean? And I thought there was going to be another hour of movie. I thought it was going to be epic. <laughs> I, thought, I thought they were going to, like, create this elaborate master plan with a mob and the FBI and everyone kind of on this thing that I wouldn't yeah. see coming and be blown away by. And that would get really complicated and dark. And I feel like that moment happens five minutes before the end of the movie. And then there's one bit where they pull a little deception. And then that's it. I was watching, I was thinking, this is great. I'm really liking this. There was just a feeling of like that Wile E. Coyote feeling. There was a point where sure, I, know exactly. I just felt suddenly like, whoa, that's it? What do you mean? Like, yeah. you know, like I, I feel like there wasn't that ending that for me brought everything together in a kind of orchestral symphonic crescendo of awesomeness that I, I wanted it to be. Here, here's what I think, since I don't mind saying it. <laughs> I, I, love I really <laughs> like Jennifer Lawrence. I think she's a great actress. I loved her in Silver Linings. I think she's the best thing about the Hunger Games movies. I think she's fantastic in Winter's Bone. Um, I think she seems great as a person. All this stuff. So this is not a dig on Jennifer Lawrence, but sure. I think she is miscast in the role. I, I think, and, and I lay the blame at David Russell's feet, actually. I think she is too young and too cute for that character. Like, it's, to me, it felt like that character should have been, I think I told this to you already, but like one of the women in Goodfellas in, when, when the wives hang out together, you know, like that kind of like yeah. New Jersey caked in makeup, it, Italian style, you know, like. I believe that Christian Bale didn't like her even as cute as she is because she was just so crazy and erratic and not what he was attracted to. And so in that way, I thought she was a good foil to uh, Amy Adams. If she was ugly, and also married to him, then it's like Amy Adams had no reason to be upset when she would come around. Like, I, I, I actually I, I liked wasn't it was saying a little bit of that it, jealous tension. I wasn't you know? saying it should be an ugly character. It's just... Well, those wives in Goodfellas are no uh, spring chickens. <laughs> uh, Amy Adams, let's talk about how great she was. I mean, I thought she... She's fantastic. ...showed actually. like 10 different sides of herself. And it's not just that she's sexy in a way we haven't seen. There was something else that was... Well, what was really, interesting about her character is that... And I think the most interesting thing in the movie is she is pissed off with Christian Bale, who she loves. Yeah, yeah. She's oh, obviously, there's a flirtatious attraction between her and the FBI agent, Bradley Cooper. And she actually says to Christian Bale, until this is over, I am going to play this guy and I'm also kind of into him. Or maybe I'm not. And, or maybe and I am. Also I'm, I want to take it out on you because I'm pissed at you. Right. And, and so you're actually watching it going, what is real here and what isn't? Like, you know, because the way it plays out with her and Bradley Cooper, you're con I'm, I was constantly thinking, is she playing him right now or is she genuinely into him? And there's yeah, moments where I don't think she knows. And that's what's like, she's kind of figuring it out as she goes along or, or both things are in play. And that was the most fascinating part of the movie, all the all the music it almost was like an opera like it's sort of the sting meets goodfellas as a kind of rock opera